All right, right now I'm gonna go take a look at a roof that was installed a few years ago by one of those fly-by-night roofing companies. That's no longer in business here, and this should be interesting. So here's the backstory on this roof. So we did a repair for this little family back in 2015, and then in 2016, there was a pretty big hailstorm here, and this roof got pretty beat up. We had come out and given an estimate to the homeowners but for whatever reason, they decided to go with one of the cheaper roofing companies, even though their insurance company was paying for the whole thing. My guess is that it was probably one of the door-to-door -door roofers. Those guys oftentimes use some pretty high pressure tactics to get somebody to sign a contract right then and there as soon as they're done with the inspection. Sometimes even before they do the inspection, they're wanting people to sign a, sign a contract. But this house is for sale and we heard from the realtor that there's some missing shingles. There's a leak by the front door and they wanted us to take a look at it and see what was going on. So, like I say, this should be interesting. Let's go take a look. Okay, so like I said, we got word from the realtor that there were some shingles missing and there's a leak. I'll show you the leak area here in just a moment, but you can see behind me. Okay, these ridge shingles have blown off. I'm going to show you why I think that happened. Uh, and then I'm going to show you some of the other kind of problem areas that are showing up on this roof. So you can see there's more ridge shingles blown off down here at the end. I'm not sure if you can see that. How lifted the ridge shingles are all the way down on this side. And that's the direction that the wind was coming from that lifted those ridge shingles down there and tore them off. I'm not sure if you can get a really good perspective of this with me holding the camera like this but these ridge shingles aren't centered on the ridge they're they're installed more to this face than they are to this face and so this side of the ridge shingles have sealed better this side of the ridge shingles you can see are lifted up quite a bit they never actually sealed and so they're just flapping in the wind, right? And so that's easily what took that off. I am gonna cut the installer some slack on this because the winds that, that took these shingles off were almost 100 miles an hour. So especially on a low, po low slope pitch like this, uh, it's hard to keep ridge shingles on. But you can also tell that um, the installers probably got called back because the ridge was coming off before. And so they came up here, put a bunch of this black mastic on here, nailed it, you know, face, face nailed it. But let's take a look at what some of the other problems are. Here's one of the main installer problems on this, on this roof. Okay, so the shingles aren't butted end to end. They're overlapped. But you'll notice, this is what's called the keyway. I call it the butt end of the shingle, okay? So they're supposed to be five and a half to six inches minimum between where this keyway line is, this butt end line is, and this one, all the way down. So you can see there's about three inches on this, three inches on this, okay? This one here, they've got, it looks like about seven or eight inches. So that's acceptable but these are far too close. And the reason that you don't want this is because if water gets underneath here, you want it to be able to run out onto the next shingle down without running underneath the shingle. If it's this close, water can easily travel like this and get underneath this shingle. Okay, but what else is going on? Let me show you what else. All right, so we're gonna lift this shingle and look at that. There's a nail right there. Okay, so what's the problem with that? Well, if water gets underneath here, which it almost assuredly is, I mean, you can see the dirty water uh, residue on this shingle. So water has been bringing, or coming down in here, bringing dirt with it. And this nail, not only is it placed right in the, the spot where water is gonna travel, you know, this nail actually should be further over here, but, it's not even sunk far enough down in to prevent water from following the nail down through the roof. So I don't even know how they didn't 
have a leak here. Speaking of leaks, let's go look and see where their leak is. Okay, so over here you've got this, this little flat valley. And again, the homeowners were reporting that there was a leak here. And so the roofers came over to try to fix it. And their fix was just to put sealant around all the edges of the shingles, as you can see here. But, look at all that. Again, you can see where all the water, whoops. Again, you can see where all the water has gotten in there. And so water travels down into here and then goes underneath this shingle right here. Then you can see on this shingle here, so this is kind of amusing. So this shingle's torn. I lift that up and I'm guessing there must have been a leak here because they got this all sealed up. And then if we lift this shingle, you can see the synthetic underlayment is all folded over right here. And then there's all this sealant <laughs> globbed on there. So their fix for the leak here was to just squirt some sealant underneath there and hope that that fixed the problem. So it doesn't really matter whether it's in roofing or anything else. The old adage is true. You get what you pay for. And the disadvantage that you have as the homeowner is that most likely you're not going to either, number one, get up on your roof and check to make sure that the install was done correctly. And number two, even if you get up on your roof to check it, do you know what a correct installation is? So that's the challenge for you as a homeowner when you're dealing with a roofing installation. Okay, all the vents, right? Huh, something suspicious here. That doesn't look or feel right. So it looks like they just didn't have quite enough box vents to do this roof installation. So instead of actually <laughs> plugging the hole or putting a box vent there, they just covered it with the underlayment and with shingles. Look at that. Just an open hole. Now I'm wondering what other surprises we're gonna find here. Any other little holes that we should be looking for? I think I better walk this ridge and see. All right, now I know that not every roofer is gonna do every job perfectly. And I really don't wanna throw these guys under the bus, but this was just a bad roof installation. Was it the worst roof ever? No, I've actually seen worse, but this one was pretty bad. So thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video. I think you're gonna like this video right here. Give it a watch. Give us a call at our office phone number right here, 719-433-6991. You can also visit our website. That's also right down here. Till our next video, I'm Tracy Bookman, owner of Homestead Roofing.